Samaya was able to pass her Praxis exams thanks to the videos, notes, and quizzes on her 240 study guide. Don't take it from me. She says don't wait or hesitate. My name is Emma, and I work with 240 to help teachers just like you pass their certification exams. This video is going to prepare you for the Praxis Biology Content Knowledge Exam, which is number 5235. And this video is going to cover three things what's on the test and how to study for it, the most important concepts to master, and we're going to look at a few practice questions. Are you ready to see what's on the biology content exam? Then fire up those Bunsen burners and let's get cooking. Now, the Praxis Biology content exam consists of six areas called categories. You'll need to have knowledge of the nature of science, molecular and cellular biology, genetics and evolution, diversity of life, ecology, and science, technology, and social perspectives. Each category is worth between 10 and 20% of your exam. We'll discuss some of the most important things to know for each category. Let's start with the nature of science and take it from the top with category one. This section of your exam covers all of the general best practices for science, no matter what branch you're studying. So you'll need to understand the process of scientific inquiry, the difference between facts, hypotheses, theories, and laws. You'll need to know some science history and when some major discoveries were made. Systems of measurement and how to represent data will come up. And you need to know lab safety and how to handle lab equipment and safety procedures. My hypothesis is that you may be feeling a bit overwhelmed right now, but you've already taken the first step to acing this exam. You're watching this video. Let's pick one of these areas to examine under our microscope and give you a little better idea of what to expect. You'll need to know how to use scientific equipment properly. For example, when reading the amount of liquid in a graduated cylinder, it's important to move your head so that you're at eye level with the liquid. Then make sure you're taking a reading from the meniscus, or lowest point of the curve, formed by the liquid. That's just one part of this category. To brush up on everything you need to know to pass your exam, check out our study guide. I'll even drop a link to it right below this video. Boom, one category done. Category two is where we start getting into the heart of the real science content. And while size-wise we're starting small, this section includes some really big ideas. We're talking super small, like atomic structure and bonding. Then we get a little larger with prokaryote versus eukaryote cells and how they work. And I mean all about how cells work. So we're talking enzymes, concentration gradients, cellular respiration and photosynthesis, organelles, the cell cycle, and protein synthesis, just to name a few hot topics. How about I get my shrink ray out and zap us down to size? Let's start with organelles. There's a lot to know here, as each organelle has its own job within the cell, like how the ribosomes use RNA to make proteins, and the mitochondria convert chemical energy into usable ATP. And if you need some practice, you can always use the flashcards that come as part of our study guide to make sure you've got it down. Since this category makes up 20% of your exam, do you want to see another little nugget from this section? Thought so. You're going to need to understand the different modes of membrane transport. So, for example, diffusion and osmosis are both types of passive transport. But in diffusion, the ions or solutes move from an area of high solute concentration to an area of low solute concentration. While in osmosis, the water, which is a solvent, moves from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. Nice! We just covered two big areas in molecular and cell bio. Let's head over to genetics. Category three covers genetics and evolution. For the genetics part, you'll need to know all about Mendel's laws of inheritance. But you'll also need to know about the stuff Mendel didn't get to, like sex-linked inheritance, co-dominance, polygenic inheritance, human genetic disorders, causes of genetic variation, and mutations. For the evolution part, you'll need to know about gene flow, genetic drift, mechanisms of evolution, like natural selection, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and evidence for evolution. Whew, that was a lot. And if you need to brush up on all of these, guess what? We have them covered for you in our study guide. But don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. How about we look at the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? The Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium states that allele frequencies in a population will not change under certain conditions. But before we go any further, we need to make sure we understand the rules. This equation makes some assumptions. So the model only works if these are true. If the assumptions are true, then we need to also meet these conditions to maintain equilibrium. If all of that is true, we can get information about gene frequency in a population by using a set of formulas. 
Mathematically, the Hardy-Weinberg theorem states that genotype frequencies are given by this system of equations. So, if we have the number of organisms that show a recessive phenotype out of a whole population, we can use these equations to determine an estimate of the number of heterogeneous individuals compared to homogeneous dominant individuals. Pretty cool, right? So, if you want to practice using these equations, stick around to the end of the video and we'll do one together. And just like that, we're halfway done! Next up is diversity of life, which is just a nice way of saying that you need to know major characteristics about all living things. Yeah, all. So you're going to need to know what classifies something as being alive, and then how to classify the alive things, like into their kingdoms and domains. You'll need to know the important characteristics of each kingdom and of the major animal phyla and plant phyla. Then you'll need to know some specifics about all major plant and animal groups, like what are their life cycles like? How do they reproduce? What are some specific structures and functions they're known for? So you could spend forever Googling all of this, or you could just use our study guide. We've pulled all the big ideas you need to know and put them all in one place. Like the difference between non-vascular plants, deciduous trees, and coniferous trees. Ready to check out what to expect in ecology? Now just a heads up, there's a lot in this tiny, only worth 10% of your exam category. But 10% is still about 15 questions, so you'll want to make sure you know what you're talking about. You're going to need to know about the hierarchical structure of the biosphere, biotic and abiotic factors that influence a population size, relationships between organisms and their environment, energy flow, biodiversity, and tons of cycles. All right, got all that? Just kidding. But you do need to know all of what I just mentioned. So let me get you started. Actually, let me introduce you to one of our fabulous tutors that you'll see in our study guide. He'll walk you through the levels of a biosphere. Individuals are one organism of a specific species. For example, one human is considered an individual. Populations are all the individuals in an area of a specific species. Organisms may compete with members of their same species. For example, males may compete for mates. A community is a small group of interacting species. Populations within a community may compete for resources. For example, two carnivore species may compete for territory. These levels all involve living things, but the physical environment plays a key role in ecology. An ecosystem includes all of the communities interacting with one another and their environment. For example, the African savanna is an ecosystem. All ecosystems with similar features are called biomes. For example, grasslands are a biome. The African savanna is an example of a grassland. So, it will share many features with other grassland ecosystems. All the biomes together make up the biosphere on Earth. This is the region of Earth where life lives. Great stuff, right? We've got all the information you just saw in the video written out in text as well, so you can choose how you want to learn. We've only got one category left. Let's do it. The last category is a nice little collection of some science topics that didn't really fit in anywhere else, like the stuff in your junk drawer. You basically need to know the impact science has on things outside of science. A big thing here is resource management. You need to know that renewable resources can be replenished, such as energy from water, wind, and the sun. The commodities can also be replaced, like drinking water and wood. But an important thing here is that these renewable commodities can still run out if we don't manage them properly. For example, if we cut down trees for lumber and paper faster than we can grow new ones. Non-renewable resources replenish too slowly to recharge, so once they're gone, they're gone. These include things like coal and iron ore. All right, that's it! We made it through all six categories. If you're still a little unsure about any of this, use the 240 study guide. It'll save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of worry. Now that we've gone over a big concept in each of our six areas, let's look at some practice questions to show you how those concepts can appear on the test. And if you want a lot of practice questions, you can click the free practice test below. At the end, you get a score report on how well you did on the test. And then you can subscribe to 240 and get all the practice questions you need to be 100% confident for the test. Did I mention that 240 has a money-back guarantee that you'll pass? Now for questions. Let's start back at the top with nature of science. 
Which of the following pieces of safety equipment is the most important to use when students are performing an investigation mixing chemicals? Middle and high school students should not be working with anything dangerous enough to require a hazmat suit, so A is out. Both a fire extinguisher and a sharps container are important to have in a classroom in case of emergency, but should not be used regularly. So D is the best choice. Anytime students work with chemicals or glassware, they must wear safety goggles. How about a question on molecular and cellular bio? Which of the following statements about membrane transport is true? Ooh, nice, we totally talked about this. So the best answer here is A. Osmosis is a specific type of passive transport and involves the movement of water, not nutrient molecules. Time to move into genetics and evolution. And because Emma always keeps her promises, here's a question using the Hardy-Weinberg model. A population of sea stars lives on a rocky area of the Pacific coast. The trait for color shows Mendelian inheritance, and purple coloring is dominant to pink coloring. Researchers counted 160 pink sea stars out of a total population of 1,000. What is the frequency of the recessive allele in this population? First, we need to find the percentage of homozygous recessive individuals. So I think we divide the observed number of pink sea stars by the total sea star count. We get 16%, so let's choose that. Oh man, we get too excited. Let's try again. Okay, so we do need that 16% of homozygous recessive individuals, but the frequency of the recessive allele is the square root of that. So 40% is the correct answer. Nice. Let's move on to diversity of life. Remember how I told you how to classify organisms? Which of the following is the proper order for the taxonomic hierarchy? You know I love mnemonics, so here's a good one for you. Kings play chess on fancy glass squares. If you can remember that one, you'll pick out D as the correct answer. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Next up, ecology. How do a population and a community differ? Multiple organisms of the same species form a population and multiple populations form a community. So A is the correct answer. Are you ready for our last category? Let's see what a question from science, technology, and social perspectives looks like. Terence lives near a river and is concerned about the pollution caused by burning fossil fuels. Which alternative energy in his area would be the best solution for his concern? While all of these choices are great alternatives to fossil fuels, B is the best choice. Since Terence lives near a river, water would be the best choice for an energy resource. The generation of hydroelectric energy is possible with flowing water. Now that's just a small sampling of practice questions to give you an idea about how those concepts are assessed on the test. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. But there's still plenty more to learn. Did you know that 240 has helped thousands of teachers pass their exams? If you really wanna make sure that you're prepared for the Praxis Biology Content Knowledge Exam, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 Study Guide. It's got hours of videos so you can watch or listen as you please. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure you're ready. And best of all, it has the money back guarantee. So click the link below right now to get started.